sun's just popped out on what has been a really awful rainy day. So we've been dodging shower, oh no, and there it goes again. Well, we've been dodging the showers, trying to get a little bit done. And I'm preparing to plant out the winter squash, the summer squash, some ridge cucumbers and the melons. Now, I haven't, I've got far more plants as usual than I've got space to put them. So I've been looking around at various ideas and one is to make use of this old iron bathtub here. Now, <laughs> this tub was in the garden when we bought the house. The previous owners maybe couldn't be bothered to shift it. It is pretty heavy, but I want to put it to good use here in the garden. This is actually a pretty sunny spot. This is a more or less west facing wall. And on the other side, there's a, a south facing wall. So this becomes a real sun trap, gets very hot in this area. So I'm even thinking it might be possible to put a couple of melons in here, let them trail over the, the side. And melons tend to do better under cover, but I'm thinking if they've got a chance anywhere in this garden to crop outdoors, then this is probably it. So this wall here, I need to get some wires across here. So I'm going to put some vine eyes into the door frames here and I can run some wires across to train some of these squash up. So I think along the back, I might put maybe three winter squash and along the front, maybe, I don't know, two or three melons and they can then sort of trail over the side. So I've got this bathtub propped up on some bricks and that's to make sure that the, the plug hole doesn't get blocked. And now we need to fill it and I don't have much bagged compost available. So I'm gonna fill it with all sorts of bits and bobs that we've got lying around. But the first thing I want to do is make sure that we have good drainage. What I've got here is the barrow full of, well, fairly large stones that we took out of the pathway in the polytunnel when we were preparing that for planting. So these are going to be great for improving the drainage at the bottom. So over the plug hole I've just set a piece of wire mesh. Just to stop those stones from falling through. This layer of stone should ensure that we have really great drainage down the bottom. Obviously this is going to need regular watering, but during a rainy spell, we don't want this compost in here to get too soggy. The next ingredient is some old potting soil. I think this must be a mixture of, um, looks like some sandy topsoil and, and then probably some homemade compost. But this hasn't been used for probably a couple of years. So it's just been sat in a bin. So there's nothing wrong with reusing this. We will have to enrich it somewhat if we expect to get any good results from the squash. So next we have a rather unsavoury collection of bits of old straw, newspaper, rotted vegetable matter, half rotted garden waste. And I mean, this isn't compost yet, but there's nothing else on our compost heap that's really fit to go. But this stuff is absolutely fine to put in the bottom of a trench or in this case, in the bottom of the bathtub. And we will fork that in with this soil just to add a bit of vegetable matter down here. And on top of that half composted waste there, we'll go in with some more of the old potting soil. Well, this is starting to fill up now. Now I want to make sure there's plenty of feed in here. So this is fish blood and bone. I'll get a couple of handfuls of that in.
and here I've got some reasonably well rotted horse compost so that should give these squash plants a really good feed I'll just mix that into the top layer of the soil and finally I've got some multi-purpose compost this stuff is a little bit rough it's quite fibrous um, there is a little bit of soil in this one so I think this is quite a good one to use just to top off this tub and then we're ready for planting I'm sure this will settle throughout the year as that material packs down in there and that layer at the bottom rots down a little bit but yeah I think this should be good there should be plenty of feed in this now I know I've been using old potting mix but there's nothing wrong with with doing that uh, especially if you've had no problems with diseases with what you've been growing in the pots and Certainly I haven't been growing squash and melons in that stuff so it should be perfectly all right to reuse that here and we've added plenty of organic matter and the fish blood and bone so be interesting to see how they do but I think they should be happy here. Well we finished that bathtub a couple of days ago and I want to get it planted today but it has been absolutely chucking it down with rain. I am soaked through but quite determined to get this done now. So I've got some horizontal wires I'm putting across here. I'm screwing vine eyes into the door frames at either end and I've got some very small barrel strainers. I'm using a two millimeter plastic coated wire. I think that's perfectly adequate for this job. And I've got half a dozen wires I can put across here. Again, I think that should be adequate. So first I'm drilling a, a little pilot hole. Then I'm going to get the vine eye in place. Now I've got this handy little gadget here with a, a slot but if you don't have one of those, you can wind them in by hand. The screwdriver is quite useful for that. I'm just taking a length of this plastic coated wire, passing it through the vine eye, and then just wrapping it round. And that's not going anywhere. On this end, I'm putting a stainless M4 barrel strainer. It's quite a small one, but that's all I need for this job. It's just going to help me keep those wires tight. So I'm going to pull that wire through reasonably tight. And then wind that round again. And then I can tighten the, no, not that way. I can tighten the strainer up. That'll be fine. I don't need it to be too tight. So the main purpose with this tub is to let me grow um, a few squash plants up the wall here. So I've got two butternuts at each end and in the middle, I've got the Tromba di Albenga. So that is, it's a squash that could be used as a summer squash or a winter squash. I've never grown it before, so I'm, I'm very interested in trying that this year. So it comes from Liguria in Northern Italy and the squash are curved with a bulbous end that has the seed cavity. So much of the fruit is free of seeds. Now they can be taken when they're small and used just like a courgette or zucchini. 
or they can be left to mature. From what I understand, it's not the best of winter squash. I've seen it described as being like a slightly wet butternut squash. So that, that doesn't sound fantastic. Um, it is supposed to be really great as a summer squash. So I'm going to probably take most of the fruit when they're small, but it would be interesting to leave, say, one or two later on in the year to develop to their full size. When they're, when they're fully grown, they can be really big fruit. So anyway, we'll find out how that goes later in the year. Along the front, I'm also going to plant some melons and I'm going to just allow those to spill over and trail onto the ground here. Now, I'm not sure whether they will succeed here outdoors, but this is a pretty warm spot. So I'm a little bit hopeful that we might get some ripe fruit from those. Now this is one of my spare plants, which is why it's still in a small pot. So um, it's been in there a little bit longer than it ought to have been, but I've already planted out the, the uh, larger specimens. But I'm, I'm sure that will be fine in here once it gets its roots down into some fresh soil and it looks reasonably healthy. Now it's not quite going to get up to that first wire yet so what I'll do is just drop a cane in here for now and I can just tie that into the cane. I can tie the cane to the wire and that can start then growing vertically. Just picking off these lower leaves, they're not very helpful. Oh, that's quite a nice looking plant actually. Got a good amount of root on it. Right, so I just tie that cane in place. And a couple of loose ties will hold the squash in place until they put some tendrils out. I'm not tying these too tightly because these stems will expand a fair bit as these plants grow on. I don't want to strangle them. And now I'll pop these rather droopy looking melons along the front edge and they can trail over the side and all we've got to do is try not to tread on them.
pinch off those seed leaves, they're not doing anything useful anymore. So I think that's more or less ready now. I might just pop a couple of flowers in that to pretty it up later. And the rain is back. So I don't know how any of these plants are going to do here. Um, th this is a fairly vigorous specimen judging from the, the leaves. So um, it'll be interesting to see how this works out. It'll be very interesting to see whether we get any decent melons out of this. But I think if you consider the volume of compost that's in here, there's a whole bag of horse compost went in and fish blood and bone um, and other organic matter. That should be more than enough to support these six plants, even, even a vigorous fella like, like this one. So I don't, I don't think there should be any problems with them growing in this space but we'll have to see we'll have to see how they do climbing the wall and ripening the fruit later on but anyway it is chucking down again so i am packing up and heading indoors so thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now mm -hmm.